Good morning. This is uh, Ted Abbott, and we are broadcasting from the studios of Ted's Photography. This is the conclusion to the Stations on the Cross series that is on YouTube. And I wanted to just thank everyone for listening. I hope that the Lord uh, riches, richly blesses you for this. Uh, to share in his passion. Uh, it is a um, very emotional journey th uh, that our Lord made, and uh, I hope that um, I can make it through it without uh, crying too terribly much. Uh, but in all things, uh, the Lord uh, shares his glory with us, and he uh, he does ask us to um, accept our burdens and accept our cross uh, and uh, not to complain too terribly much about it because whatever we are going through uh, compared to what he went through is um, pretty small. So let's start our journey today uh, by doing our uh, crossing ourselves in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the Lord richly bless the reading of his word. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones, and that is from Psalm 22, 171. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing, and that is uh, Luke 23, verse 34. I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And that is John 6, verse 38. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son reconciled us to you and to one another. Help us to embrace his gift of grace and remain united with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. And that is John 12, 32. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And that is Luke 23, verse 46. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God richly exalted him. And that is Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. Let us pray. God our Father, by his death, your Son has conquered death, and by his resurrection, he has given us life. Help us to adore his death and embrace his life. Grant this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. Thus it is written that the Messiah would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And that is Luke 24, verse 26. Those who love your law have great peace. And that is Psalm 119, 165. This is how God showed his love. He sent his only son to the world as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And that's 1 John 4, verse 9. Let us pray. God our Father, grant that we may be associated in Christ's death and we may advance towards the resurrection with great hope. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The 14th station. Jesus is placed in the tomb. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. However, if it dies, it bears much fruit. And that is John 12, <clears throat> verse 24. When Jesus died, he died to sin once and for all. However, the life he lives he lives for God. In the same way, you must regard yourselves as being dead to sin 
and alive for God in Christ Jesus. Romans 6, verses 10 and 11. Christ was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you raised Jesus from the dead. Through your Holy Spirit, grant life to our mortal bodies through the same Spirit who abides in us. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. And for the 15th station, which is the resurrection of Jesus, I'm going to read chapter 20 of verse John. And we're going to go through verse 10. The Empty Tomb On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple was faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and he believed. For they did not yet understand that scripture had to be that he rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned home. But Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there. But she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And she thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I'm going to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and what he told her. That is reading of the word of the Lord. Praise God, we have a risen Savior. Amen.